am Daniel Lucas, and welcome to Book 101. Book 101 is all about the books that I read for the last 40 years, and today I have my special guest. He is the author of several books, no other than Mr. Richard Ayer. Hi, oh, Daniel. I'm good. Good, Mr. good. How are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. How's the weather in England? <laughs> it's awful. It's uh, raining and it's dark. So it's now, it's it's over here at the moment. It's uh, 20 to 4 in the afternoon and it's already getting dark. It's horrible. So, so how's Halloween? Uh, it was all right. I went across to my daughters uh, and my grandchildren were there. So I saw them all dressed up and uh, they had a nice time. Plenty of Plenty of sweeties and candy i suppose you'd call it but yeah it was good it was all right i think uh halloween is related to your book that we're going to discuss today well certainly horror yeah it's <laughs> definitely uh related yeah so what uh book will we going to discuss today mr richard well i thought we'd talk about the the first the very first book i ever i ever had published which which is minstrel's bargain why it's hard for you to publish there's a, oh, it's, there's a really long story. The first story I ever wrote was it was a story called Point of Contact. That's now a book. Um, and I tried to get that published. But the, I'm talking, that's, that was back in about 1988, 89. Um, and so long before sort of um, independent publishers and things like that. And so nothing happened with that one. I sent it around a few agents and things, and nobody wanted it, uh, and rightly so, to be honest. It was the first, the first version of that was was pretty awfully written. <laughs> um, and then so I decided to write a horror novel, um, and but also um, I was and I still am. I, I love sort of rock music, sort of um, heavy metal music. And so I wanted a I wanted a story about that, and so uh, I wrote it. It didn't get anywhere. Again, this was back in about nineteen ninety one, two, three, something like that. In fact, there's a picture of me. My daughter is my eldest daughter is thirty next year, and there's a picture of me with her sitting on my lap at a typewriter writing Minstrel's Bargain. Um, mm-hmm. And it just it never got anywhere, and so I, I sort of gave up on writing really, and uh, you know the. Uh, the scripts that I'd written for Minstrel's Bargain and, and Point of Contact, just I put them up in the loft and forgot about them. And then back in 2014, my unfortunately, my, my dad died, my father died, and he used to write, uh, he used to do sort of little daft little stories and poems for, for his grandchildren. Um, and I, I was looking around just because I was wondering if we could get a, a little book published of, of the things he did. And this is when I started to discover all of these uh, these indie publishers that were around. I didn't know anything about one about them. So I, I got in contact with one of them and, and they said, yeah, we'll, we'll take it on. And so it was originally published by uh, Bloodhound Books, they were called. Both all of the all of the prophecy books, the, the three books in this trilogy are, are just self-published now by me. Oh, sounds interesting. What question triggered you to wrote this book? It was, I, I'd written Point of Contact, um, and I'd sort of, I think I'd tried to write it like James Herbert. We, we were talking last week, and I was telling you, uh, I was I was a massive fan of James Herbert, the horror author James Herbert. And I, I think Point of Contact is written in a very James Herbert-esque way but once that hadn't got anywhere i thought you know what i'm going i want to write about something i know and so minstrel's bargain is set in the city where i now live newcastle in the northeast of england um and it was to do with my my love of both horror and and rock music and i and so i made the uh the 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 hero if you like of the book a guy called phil sturgis he's a He's a reporter working for a music magazine, or a heavy metal music magazine, um, and this is where he he meets uh, this character, this new band called Minstrel's Bargain. But there's a there's a reason why the book and the band is called that. Oh, give us one highlight of the book. Ooh, one highlight of the book. I haven't read it for donkeys years, you know, Minstrel's Bargain. <laughs> uh, 
it's I'll give people a warning. It's it's very violent. Um, it's very the horror and the violence in it is very. It's very uh, it's described a lot. <laughs> So okay. you, you get a lot of sort of really. So if you if anybody is listening and they don't like sort of real, I wrote it almost. I've since I've written it, people have said this is this is Paul Parra, and I didn't even know what Paul Parra was, uh, but I think it is. It's in places, you know, the description of the violence that the it's the music of Minstrel's Bargain that causes people to uh, act in violent ways towards each other. Uh, and so that's it's very descriptive, I would say. So there, mm. there you go. That's with that. If you compare to Shadow of the Knife and Eternal Life, what do you think the connection? Oh, the connection. There's, I think the con- We were talking about this when I was talking to you the last time. I think the connection is the what the main character wants to do. The, the, there's a because um, there's no no connection in the you know in either in the sort of i suppose the style of writing but there's no because this is a it's a sort of a uh, it's well it's a horror it's a, it's a demonic horror story set in 1988 newcastle um whereas obviously shadow of the knife is a is a pure um sort of thriller but a historical thriller and a life eternal is, is this other very different type of uh, quieter, more inward looking sort of um, story. Uh, I, I think possibly the, the, there's some people complained about shadow of the knife, about the description of the, the bodies, you know, the dead women who are the women who are killed in that story. Um, and I, which I was a bit surprised about because if you've seen any or read anything about Jack the Ripper, you know just how horrific those murders were in the state that he left the bodies in. Uh, so I suppose there is a connection there. There's not, I wouldn't say there's a lot of connection between Minstrel's Bargain and a story like A Life Eternal. Uh, I think they're very different, apart from that supernatural edge to them. Be awesome, Mr. Richard. If you give us five adjectives of the Minstrel's Bargain, what are they? Well, the first one would have to be violence. There's a lot of violence in it. Uh, humor, you know, there is a, a, a humor uh, between Phil and uh, and his his best mate uh, Toby in the book. Uh, it's horror. There's a lot of horror in there. There's metal. Let's say metal for heavy metal music, because the you know it is a heavy metal band. Violence, humor, horror, metal. You know what? Love. There's a lot of love in it. There's there's things happen to Phil, and you realise he's a he's a nice guy. He's a good lad. He's a he's you know Phil Sturgis. I would think would I would like him to be my friend. <laughs> he's a, he's a he's a down to earth nice man, and he does what he thinks is right, and he tries to do the right thing all the time. And I suppose that's a connection. You know what I mean? Just thinking about that, I think there's a connection of people trying to do the right thing between all of my books really where can you buy it oh, again it's mostly amazon because it's um because it's self published all three books are self published um mostly i think amazon is where you can pick it up and and minstrel's bargain is probably the the book that people download the most of my books simply because uh it's it's free <laughs> you can get the kindle version for free Whereas you know the, the 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 idea is that hopefully people will enjoy it and, and buy the other two books in the in the trilogy, but that doesn't seem to work. You can also get I'm just getting this up on the on the screen as I'm talking to you. You can also get it at uh, Barnes and Noble, uh, Kobo, Apple Books, Scribed. I think you say that it's Scribed without an E. Yes. Tolino, Overdrive. Yeah, there's lots of different places you can you can uh, you can get it from. You even borrow it. It's like a virtual library called Borrow Box, and you can get it from there. But it is free if you if you if you've got an Amazon account, you can. And if you want to get a free book, it, there you go. Audio book. This is the only book I've got, which is an audio book as well. Buy the audio book. Yeah, in in Canada, I buy in Chapter or Indigo. It's available in Canada, Chapter and Indigo. The prophecy trilogy. Why do you call the title is prophecy? The three books. Well, 
the, the funny thing is when I wrote Minstrel's Bargain, when I first wrote it back in the early 90s, I had no intention of of making it into a tr trilogies didn't really, you know, a series of books didn't really exist. I mean, you know, there were one or two writers who, who might write a sequel to a book, but there, nowadays there's every single book seems to have, you know, uh, sequel after sequel after sequel. Uh, it's not really my thing, but uh, so when I first wrote it, I, um, I had no intention of making it a sequel, but then when it was it was published by uh, Bloodhound Books originally, I added a little chat because <laughs> I cheated. What I did, what I yes. did, because I wrote it in nineteen ninety, you know, between sort of ninety one and ninety three, I would say something like that. Maybe it's a little bit later. I decided it was written, you know, with how the world was, or certainly how Newcastle was at that time. And so I decided, you know what, I'm just going to make it in, I'm going to set it in 1988, so then I don't have to change anything. <laughs> you know, I don't have to add in things like mobile phones or the internet or anything like that, because um, I can set it in 1988. And, I, and so I, I, when it was eventually published in 2015, first of all, I added a, a last chapter to it, and I set it in 2019 which was set 30 years after that story and so once i'd done that and it was published uh, and it had phil sturgis as a because he, he's 30 in the first book and then it, at the end it had him as a 60 year old man and i thought i wonder if i can continue this story because the the character of minstrel himself minstrel the reason why the band is called minstrel's bargain is uh, Minstrel is this immortal demon who sort of takes over various different people throughout the books. You know, there's this singer of, of Minstrel's Bargain is this this uh, dark character called Kick Bazaar. And he is, in effect, he's, he's Minstrel. He's this demon who, he, he seals soul with his music, basically. That's what he does. So the music sort of takes people over. And anyway, sorry, I'm going off on a tangent there. He so published this and then I, I did the last chapter and then I, I set it in 2019. And then I thought I'll have another one in the middle, sort of 10 years after, set 10 years after Minstrel's Bargain. Uh, and then I had the last one where the first the first chapter of the, the last book is actually the last chapter of Minstrel's Bargain. So we, we, have, we have a change in Phil. He's a young sort of free young man 29 30 in the first book by the second book he's 40 and he's settled down he's got children and then in the last book he's he's 60 he's ready for retirement and uh you know but this this character minstrel just keeps haunting his life all the way all the way through his life basically i don't want to make a spoiler alert but yes what are the connection of book one book two and book three well, the connection is the characters, the minstrel who takes over various, you know, different people throughout the books. Um, and sorry, your original question was asking me, why is it called the Prophecy Trilogy? So after I'd written this, the first book, when I was writing the second book, I thought, right, this, this would be good for a trilogy. Um, and the prophecy is, again, without spoilers, there is a prophecy in in the world of, of the of the demons and uh, you know there's there's i call it the the dark and the light you know and and there's there's these two within the books there is these two mythical worlds where obviously minstrel comes from the dark but there is another character who helps uh phil sturgis and who comes from the light and there's a prophecy within those worlds about something that i'm not going to go into but there is a reason why it's called the prophecy and the prophecy unfolds throughout the three books over a 30-year period that the three books are set in. Very well said, Mr. Richard. So how many days or months you wrote? It took me a while because the original, I, you know, again, talking about way back in the day, I wrote it by hand. I wrote it out by hand. Uh, and then when I, then I put it on a typewriter and then eventually, you know, back in 2000, I transferred it all onto a, uh, you know, on a word on a computer. And originally that was about 116,000 words. It was far too big. So some of it got chopped out. Some of it I actually used. Some of that chopping out from the first book, I rehashed to use in uh, 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 both the other books, both the sequels, just little bits. 
Um, but it took a long time because I was, you know, I was working for, I was working shift work at the time. I had, I had, uh, Emily had been born, my eldest daughter, Lizzie hadn't, hadn't been born yet. Um, so it took a long time. I could just, just whenever I got the time to sit in front of the typewriter and, and get on it, it took over a year, I think, to, to actually get the first, first sort of script written, really. So do you think this book is your least book or second to your favorite? Ah. <sighs> It it's there's I've got a very soft spot in my heart for the prophecy trilogy books and especially Minstrel's Bargain because it was the first book I had published. You know, um, I I don't think I would knowing what I do and this is only based on sort of having other books published since and learning some stuff. You know, as you as you do things, you learn. This is a very raw book, I would say. Uh, even though it's being edited, I think it could still do with a little bit tighter ed editing in it but i'm not i don't want to do i'm loath to do that because it is of its time and i i love the character of minstrel and i've i've thought i've been thinking can i bring minstrel back in a almost it would have to be sort of like a prequel um in some form or another because i just he's so sort of arrogant and evil <laughs> that that i actually <laughs> That I actually like the character, you know, um, and he's very, very hard to get rid of. So no, I would, it's it's there's always a space in my heart for Minstrel's Bargain and for all of you know the rest of the books in that trilogy as well. Um, I don't know. I, yes. I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't. I have. I wouldn't say I've got a favorite book. I think A Life Eternal is possibly my favorite, but simply because I think the writing in that is is better than possibly than my other books it's different it i did enjoy it i'm trying to think you know it was a long time ago uh but i did enjoy writing it uh it was before the reality of marketing and things like that reared its ugly head you know i i sort of in a world of sort of uh, positivity then um which has been knocked out of me over the years slightly of of writing books but um no, I do love I do love Minstrel's Bargain. It's very different to the to the stuff I've been writing lately, but that's not to say it's either better or worse. It's just it's a pure horror uh story, you know, of a violent in your face sort of eighties schlock horror novel. And I like that. But I think it's it's decently written, you know, it's decently written. Yes. So what did you learn from this book? I learned that your dreams don't always come true when you're writing a book because I had big visions for this, you know, as anybody does, I think, and, and anybody, not to be ultra famous or anything like that, but the idea was, wouldn't it be lovely to make a living from writing, which I'm, I'm never going to do. That's never going to happen. But that, you know, I've come to terms with that. Um, but I learned I love writing. It, it gave me a... To, that you know to fit, to type the end on a script even when it it hasn't been edited or anything like that especially a, a script as big as minstrel's bargain the original script you know over a hundred thousand words that's satisfying that's like i've done something I, you know i've 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 created something and i think that's what writing is it's it's a yes. it's an art form it's a form of art isn't it and it's it's yes. creating something and i think when you've done that there's a and it doesn't matter really if it if it never sells a copy. You you have done something that not everybody can, you know. Sure. Uh, and I think that's and I think that's a that's a nice thing to feel. Yes, you are being proud to yourself. I'm, yeah, I, absolutely. I contribute something to the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and you know, maybe it doesn't contribute anything to the world, but it for me personally, it's it's a little. And I think, especially with Minstrel's Bargain, it, it sort of encapsulates a, a period of time in my life. You know, when my daughters were just little girls and, and I was a young man. Um, uh, and it was, and I, the books tend to do that. You know, when I, when I sort of look at them, I, I get the idea or the feeling of where I was and what I was doing at the time. Yes. Um, it's a part of your life. Yeah, I think that's 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 a yeah, it is part of my life, big part of my life. So, what else you can say about Minstrel's Bargain? Uh, Minstrel's Bargain. So, 
we the story again very sort of Herb, herbert esque there are lots of little vignettes like i said the the vignettes concentrate on the people who are uh there's i don't want to go into too much detail but that's it's about the souls of of the people who listen to the music of minstrel's bargain it's not just the it's not the band so much it's the music of minstrel himself and the bargain is is important as well but i'll if anybody reads it you'll by the time you get to about three quarters of the way into the book you'll realize why the title why it's called minstrel's bargain but it's it's i think it's like i say there's there's a lot of good writing in there but it is my it's early writing and my critical eye now would possibly change some things but i still think it's good i think it's a good story it's it's an original story that's that's what's good about it it's i think not the not the idea of a demon stealing souls but the you know putting it into a sort of modernish world of heavy metal which i knew quite a lot of you know because i was into bands like that at the time and uh in fact that would have probably been my perfect job sort of working on a on a, a magazine like do you get kerrang in canada kerrang magazine it's been going a long yeah. time uh we well, see i was reading kerrang magazine which was a, a, a like a weekly magazine all about you know bands and heavy metal music and things like that in the late sort of 70s early 80s um and so i wanted to set it's sort of a James Herberty type of book, a horror story, but put it into something that I really loved, you know. Uh, and so I learned that uh, it wasn't as easy as it seems to be. <laughs> but it, uh, but it, it worked out okay at the end, I think. So can you be my guest also on my Music 101? Let's talk about uh, 80s band. Yeah, that would be really cool. Yeah, I would love to do that. That'd be awesome because right now we are talking about classic Canadian rock band and all right. I love you to be my guest over there and let's talk about your favorite band. Okay, that would be that would be really good, yeah. So Mr. Richard, please invite our listener to read your books. <laughs> yes. And please, if you read the first one, have a go at the second one. I mean, to be honest, I'm just trying to say I don't know how much it is in Canada, but in Britain, you can buy the, the three books for, you know, next and out, price of a cup of coffee. You know, if you've got them on Kindle, you can buy the whole lot for three pounds something, really, three ninety nine or something like that. So I don't know what that is in Canadian dollars, but um, not very much. Yes. Not very much. I think five dollars. Five, five dollars. There you go. Five dollars and you, you'll get 30 years of rock and horror yes <laughs> it's interesting horror please let's support mr richard air uh, let's read the books and let's empower people like him yes, right please. mr richard empower it yes. yes thank you very much so let's shout out to the people listening in jamaica i am number 43 thank you so much Whoa. Estonia at number 62, Ghana at number 75, and Iceland at number 126, and of course in Ghana, 135. Thank you so much, people. Thank you, Mr. Richard. Thank you, Daniel. You take care and I'll talk to you soon. All those people I spoke of last week um, are the same people today so i'm gonna i'm gonna do it again steve griffiths fee phillips andrew neil mcleod john fullerton patricia ailing james marks richard wall david owen hughes we'll have to get together for a drink soon dave chris tetrold blair adrian chamberlain anita waller duncan bradshaw shane agnew chris hall trish finnegan nicky baker and again i'm sure there's probably other people that i'm missing out constantly but Anybody and everyone who's ever read me books, and especially if you've left a nice review, thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Richard. See you next week. See you next week, Daniel. Bye-bye. More to come, people. See you soon. Bye, Daniel. Thank you.